Hi, and welcome to this next lecture. So if you're brand new to Ableton Live, you haven't really used it before, you might be thinking this digital audio workstation, this program looks really complex and difficult to use. It was like that when I first started using Ableton Live. I was a bit overwhelmed because there's so much stuff going on. It's different to other digital audio workstations I've used before like Pro Tools or Logic Pro or Cubase. This session view can be a bit daunting, but believe me, it gets a lot easier. But the main thing you need to do is just go in, experiment, and just write some music, really. There's one thing learning all the theory, there's one thing learning what everything does, and there's another thing actually going in and practically doing it. So in this lecture, I'm just going to go through and just quickly make a few loops, make a few grooves. So I want you to go through and do the same afterwards. So it's not about making perfect music straight away. It's not about making the best music ever. It's about getting used to this piece of software so it becomes second nature. So once you understand how it works and you can just go through and make music without thinking about the technical things, without thinking about what stuff does, that's when you know you've mastered Ableton Live. But before you get to that point, you just need to go in and just experiment. Just get some clips down there. Just make some music. So let's actually go ahead and start a new project. So we need to go to File over here and create a new live set. So in Ableton Live, we call them sets rather than projects. And here, open up a blank set. So this set here will have two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. We also have some reverb and delay and the master channel. So what I'm going to do for now is just use presets. Later on in this course, I will be going through a lot of these different instruments. I'll explain how you can actually use it to create your own sound, but for now, we're just going to use presets because I want you to just start making music, really. Just start getting used to the workflow because it is quite different to other digital audio workstations. So I'm just going to go on instruments. Just use the first one, analog, and let's go down and find mallet. Let's just hear this. Make sure this little headphone button's on. That'll do. Let's just click this over, drag it over to MIDI. Okay, so that brings up this instrument. So I've got my MIDI keyboard plugged in. Make sure you've got auto on or monitor or in, because if monitor is on off, you won't hear it. If it's on auto, you obviously will. Okay, now let's go on to drums and let's go on to a drum kit and let's find. Let's go on to drum rack below here. Let's just preview some of these. This will do. 606, let's drag this onto MIDI. It might take a moment to load. Okay. And now what we need to do is just create some drums. So you'll notice here this drum rack, you get these different sounds. And if we click on this blank part here, you can bring up the MIDI editor. If we drag this up, you'll notice it links up to the different drum sounds. So here we have kick. If we hit B, we have a little pencil tool. If we turn on the headphone here, there you go, there's basically just a kick drum loop. So I'm going quite fast, but this is what it's really about, just getting used to it. Here you go, you've got a kick drum. Now we're going to copy this over, hold down Alt to Option, and double click on this, and now I'm gonna add a snare. You look here, snare 606. Get a different snare sound, let's use that one, two and four. Okay, I'm going to color this differently, right click, choose a different color, just so I know it's different. Hold down Alt, drag this down, Okay, and now we're gonna add some hi-hats. Let's find hats. Not that one, let's find closed. Okay, that'll do. Okay, just really, really quick, and let's color this different. Okay, that one there. So now we've got some drums. Stop all clips with this square in the bottom right. Now let's add on a bass part. Let's go down to here, make sure this is on. Okay, that one there. Okay, let's hear this back. So all I did is just use the B, just type in some bass notes, and that's really it. I don't really like the sound cloud and bells. It doesn't really sound like a bass part. So let's go back to instruments, let's choose analog, and this time let's open up bass. Choose the first one, bass floor bounce, just drag this over to here. And now let's go over to this triangle button and hit play. 
Okay, we've got a nice little groove going. Just going to close this browser. And then let's hit this button here. Let's play this one. Let's add some hi-hats by pressing this next drum kit. Okay, we're getting the groove going. Okay, I want to add another MIDI instrument. So let's go to Create, Create New MIDI Track. So MIDI Track, this is my preset. I'm just going to delete this for now. Let's hit this arrow here, and then let's go on to Instruments. Now let's choose, let's choose Wavetable. That one's very interesting. And let's choose Mallets. This one will do. Krockhausen, I think it says. Ableton is a German company. It's probably why it's called Krockhausen. Probably saying that wrong. And let's double click on this and let's just type in some information. So we've got B. I'm just going to. This is an arpeggio of C minor. C minor 7 with that 7th note, which is a B flat. If you don't know your minor scale, it's the same as a major scale, but you flatten the 3rd, flatten the 6th, flatten the 7th. Or if you're brand new to music theory, just use the white notes, which is C. C major. Okay. Now let's just drag this over, hold down Alt. I'm going to delete the first one, and then bring it in on the second one. Now we're creating more of an arrangement. Let's just go through and use these arrows here. So we've got this going, this groove. And now we're going to bring in the different drum beat and now this synth part. And the next one. Then we can just drag this down and solo this. And then bring it back with the kick drum. Copy over this drum part with the snare, and then copy over the bass. Copy over this kick drum. You can always go through and just select different ones here. Just manually click them. Double click on this, I'm just going to change this a little bit more, add a few more notes in. Now when we play it back, it's a few other notes. Just going to colour this, right click, okay, let's do the same with this one, just going to actually Command A, and then hit B, and then hold down Alt drag this down an octave as well. So play octaves. Drag this down and now right click this. Now I'm going to trigger these clips. Remember we can always go into the effects and change it to a different one. What I'm actually going to do though is hit create new MIDI track, insert new MIDI track. And then what I'm going to do is find another synth here. This one here, Grotty Bell, drag this over to this MIDI track. This will replace whatever instrument is there. And I'm actually going to just copy some of these over. I'm going to be sneaky and copy some of them that don't really link in. And then hopefully, let's hear what this sounds like. Now this is just a really quick way I've just writing in some music. I didn't have any of this planned. It's just about creating layers, creating clips, and that's how you can quickly get in and start making music. I want you to do the same. I want you to spend 10, 15 minutes just going through, playing with ideas, just getting used to this session view, because that's one of the main things about Ableton Live that sets it apart from other digital audio workstations, but also makes it quite difficult to start with. When I first looked at Ableton Live, I was like, whoa, what is this session view? What is going on with these little buttons, these clips? I don't like this, I want to use the arrangement view. However, once I got used to the session view, I realised how powerful it is and how quickly you can just go through and make arrangements and just throw bits in everywhere and just make really interesting music compared to the arrangement view, 
don't get me wrong, you can make some great music in the arrangement view, but generally, I prefer using the session view, coming up with loads of great ideas, and then going through the arrangement view, tweaking it, and automating sections. So moving stuff around, and maybe tweaking some of the effects and volumes. So I'm just going to play this now, show you what you can make really quickly, and how easy it actually is. Obviously, you can use other chords, you can create stuff that's a bit more experimental, a bit more exciting than that. But for this example, I just thought I'd just go through and show you how you can just quickly go in, drag some MIDI information around to start making music from scratch. Of course, you can use loops as well, you can use samples. Of course, you can use audio. We will be looking at recording audio later on. But let's also just have a look at some of these as well. Let's go on samples, let's find one of these audio samples. Let's drag this in here as well. Of course we can use this audio sample. You will need to do a few more things like warping, make sure it's in time really. So if you want to have a look at warping audio, be sure to check out the lecture all about warping audio. So I just wanted to show you this lecture because making music in Ableton Live is about making music. It's not always about the preferences, it's not always about setting up and knowing what stuff does. A lot of the time, it's about just jumping in the deep end, making music, experimenting, and learning from trial and error. So I hope you found this useful, just my workflow of quickly throwing in ideas, and I hope you practice doing the same thing. I hope you just go in, start making music, start making loops, and then continue the lectures. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lecture.